Hi guys, so I am super excited to kick off another swap. Last time, I guess it was last month really, went off without a hitch. It was great. Um, I, you know, people learn, people started out. Some people, this is the first time they ever made a laminated notebook or journal or uh, participate in a swap even so it was just a really great time um, so today I'm gonna open up the one for um, July I probably won't do another one until well, I want to say September but that might be too ugh. maybe I will do one in August I'll talk about that in just a minute but um, if I have any links for any of the items that I'll be using I'll have in the description box um, those would be affiliate links um, which means I'll make a small commission if you're to purchase any items using those links um, but I want to go over real quickly what the guidelines are. So if you've watched last month's videos, this month I hope it's going to be faster. I'm going to try to just get to it because there is something new that I want to add that I want you guys to do for this one. And just to change it up because I think if we always just change the theme, it's going to get kind of stale, right? We're always doing this, we're always doing beads, we're always doing, you know, a little paper clip or whatever. Let's do something different every time, hopefully, and we'll see how that goes. So there's something I want to talk about in this video that we're going to add to the front. Like here we have these beautiful beads. This is the one I got last time in the swap. Um, I think Gail, is that right? That I got hers. So I have it here um, just to show you the size. So it is going to be a B6. I did ask you guys if maybe we should change the size to small ones, which I think would have been cute because we could have done two small ones like this, like that are basically half of this. Um, so it can go into the uh, priority flat, eh, small priority flat rate mailer. Um, but more people said they were really hooked on the B6, and it's a nice size. It is. It's a nice functional size. So you know, but what I'm thinking is and why I said, okay, maybe I'll do it in August is for the next time, because so this is Christmas in July, for the next one, this is not Christmas in July, this is from the summer swap, but um, for the next one, we'll do two small ones and it'll be for ha Halloween and fall. So like one can be like fall related, one can be more Halloween-y. Or if you don't do Halloween, because I know some people don't, you can do two fall ones. It doesn't matter. You're going to do two small ones and they're going to be adorable. And then when I swap them out, I'll choose several people to swap with each other so you're not going to get just one person's uh, notebook you'll get two people's I think that's kind of fun and it's something cute you know I actually just found an old uh, mini album that was that I just made with some dyes and stuff that were all like when Dorian was little so I'm like oh, like things like that it's just so sweet to go back and look at so either way however you use them a textual plan with or just to pop you know put things in there your pictures your thoughts however you want to use it um, is great so I just want to show you the size so it is going to be B6 which we're just going to round it up to 5x7 that makes it easier because a real B6 is like a little bit or weird about 5 and a little bit smaller than 7 or whatever we're just going to do 5x7 I'll talk about all that in just a minute it is going to be a Christmas um, uh, theme and I was kind of thinking about this one because I know for us I think They've done like, uh, was it polls and research and stuff like that? Like in the U.S., it seems like people more celebrate Christmas as a tradition more than um, a religious holiday, which obviously is a religious holiday, but that's just how it is. And I think that might even be the same for like the U.K. But um, however you want it to interpret Christmas, so that could be wintry, it could be you know Santa Claus stuff, it could be uh, more related to you know the reason for the season. That's up to you. Just know if you're in the swap, you might get something that maybe maybe you're not Christian. Maybe that doesn't mean it, you know like that you don't celebrate it in that way. So that part, I'm kind of I, I don't know. I might have to maybe if someone sends one in that's more uh, related to that, I'll have to like maybe switch them in between each other. Do you know what I'm saying? Like let's say we get four or five and those four or five names will swap with each other. I don't know that part yet. But not to get caught in the weeds here, I just wanted to let you guys know. And normally people just go for like the Santa Claus and the winter kind of things, but just letting you know. Uh, I might handle that a little bit differently. Um, these are things that I printed out, so we'll get to this in just a second. But I just quickly want to go over the guidelines. This video might have to be two videos because of what I want to do that's extra. That's going to be, I think, sweet for this one. Um, what I want us to do, and you probably saw it in the picture, but I don't have it here to show you yet, is to add, um, I don't know if I want to call it like a belt buckle or a little buckle. Um, I think some people call it a swag, but it's... I don't know if it's called swag because like oh it looks nice it's like swaggy or because it's like a swag like a floral swag right so something you're gonna put on the front here it doesn't even have to be flowers if you want to do like die cut shapes of Santa Claus or you know uh, wintry things or like um, snowflakes we'll talk about it in a minute I'm gonna walk you through every step of making it. I'm gonna make mine with felt which is what I would prefer but I know not everybody has felt you can make it out of paper you can make it out of Fabric, I mean, whatever it is that's going to keep up, right? I think fabric can fray, but if you're good with fabric and you know what you're doing, 
then that's not a problem either. Uh, so we'll talk about that in just a minute, but that's what's going to make this one different. So B6 with a, um, I'm going to just call it a belt buckle. <laughs> I don't know. So I have everything written out here. This is the guideline that you will receive once you sign up. Um, I want to say, just reading off the top here, um, I'm going to go over it really quickly. So I'm going to close the sign up. Oh, I forgot about that part. When are we going to close the sign up? Um, today is a day later than last time. Um, let's say the sign ups close on the 12th and that means you telling me that you want to do this. If you sign up today, you're going to get your guidelines today and you're going to start working on it and you can send it in tomorrow or the next day. You know, they don't take that long to make, but it might be that you want to source some things out so it's going to take a little bit longer. I'm going to close the sign ups on the 12th, so meaning by the 12th you would have signed up or the 12th is the last day. And please send in your swaps no later than July 17th, which is a Saturday. Um, meaning get it in the mail by the 17th so on the 17th that's the last day to mail it please don't mail it any later than that and this is typical what happens with every swap i know some things come up but there's problems or issues if something comes up just let me know i know i've had a couple people say hey i couldn't make it and that was fine i did have a couple people say hey i couldn't make it but i'm gonna send it to you late and that's not the best thing because even at that one person's i think that was gonna be late came in super late like i barely got it a couple days ago and so like you never know what the post office is gonna do there's always some kind of hiccup so if you cannot make the 17th day Deadline, please let me know and just back out okay because it's it just otherwise people want it, you know my inclination is to wait for your swap and then people are waiting for their swap because we're waiting for this one person so like it's just not fair so um, just let me know that you know you couldn't make it on the 17th and then that'll be it um, and I hope people are hearing that because uh, I'll still get uh, questions about that um, and I know things come up and uh, you know unfortunately things happen but if you can please just let me know that you couldn't make it and then we'll leave it at that I do have one from last time that did come in that we'll see how I swap that out. I'm not sure. Um, okay. And then however you want to send it in, that's up to you, of course. I mean, that's, you know, your money, however you want to package it and send it in. But please know it's going to go back in a small flat rate party box. That worked out really well last time. I mean, I got them swapped back and swapped back like in a day or two. So it was awesome. Uh, the bulk came out that first day after I did the swap in the morning or after we did the live video. And, um, and they went out. But... And please know that means you're going to have to pay that either in cash, some people send in cash, um, or PayPal. And those are the only two options, okay? Uh, cash or PayPal, And because um, I don't really do anything else. Um, but I'll have that information in the guidelines to who you send it to. And I said before you have to send it as a gift through PayPal because otherwise PayPal will take fees out of what you send me. Um, they don't do gift anymore. What they call it is send to friend or relative. And then that means you pay the, you know, whatever the fee is. Um, it's not that much money, guys. It's just like, a, I guess it depends on the amount, but the amount should be $8.45, so it's not a huge fee. Um, and then um, I'll get it, and I'll mark it off, and, you know, that'll be fine. Um, but along with that, I know we like to be very generous, and we like to give people lots of things. Um, it all has to fit in that small priority rate box, so please, if you want to deck out, like, the inside, you know, giving people extra stickers or little, you know, um, things, die cuts, stuff they can do, great. Not too many extra things other than the, the, um, planner itself, okay, or the, um, traveler's notebook itself, because this, the, even the thickness of this is already maxing out the small flat rate priority box, so please no extras, like, not too crazy, all right, a little bit, that's fine, because I know we all like to be generous, but, um, not too much, just keep in mind that it's going to go back in a small flat rate box, okay, keeping that in mind, I think it'll help us all, and the reason I have these guidelines, um, and it's so funny, because I know some of you guys sent me your videos, and people are like, and she wanted this, and she wanted, I'm like, oh, I sound like... <laughs> I'm like, it has to be, no, it's just that everybody gets a nice uniform swap, and all the comments I heard from you guys were, oh my gosh, this was run so well, and thank you so much, and I really appreciate the guidelines, because everybody has um, a basic, you know, expectation, and then whatever you want to do after that, that's up to you, but it has to have certain things, just so that everybody has a good experience, so I'm, I was really happy with that, and I'm sorry if I sound like, da 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 you know, so, Having said that, you're going to get guidelines that look like this, and you can print them out, or you can just keep reading them, obviously, off of your computer. I'm just going to look at it really quickly, because we're going to go through this. Um, so the journal's going to be like this. Of course, it's going to be Christmas-related. Um, it's a B6 size, right? Uh, which, again, I said it's rounded out as 5 by 7 The actual cover is going to be a little bit bigger than 5 by 7 but the inserts, what's inside of here are actually five by seven, these guys, okay? And then your folder can be whatever, but you know, you kind of want to make it the same size. So I recommended last time I went through everything and I'm gonna try to do it kind of quick this month, this time. So if you're not sure what I what I mean, go back and look at the other videos. I'll have them linked and you can have more information because um, 
it's quite possible I forget something in this video. And that last one, I was super thorough. So, same thing. Um, the cover is going to be um, for a, T a, ugh, a B6 size TN. That means this actual paper, the paper that's inside of this lamination, is 7 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. I know, I think one person said her pouches were a little too short for that, for the 11 and a quarter. I'm like, you know, do what you have to do, but... Um, for me, maxing out at eight, uh, eight and a half by eleven, you know, your standard A2 size pouch, is seven and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So that's the paper, and then we're gonna laminate. So we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Um, I just want to make sure that that's what it is. It's gonna have three inserts, meaning these like little notebooks. You're gonna have three of them, one folder, and then um, I had mentioned it's gonna be four uh, of these guys. Four. I can't show them to you here. Like, no, well, that's the one from outside. Four of these. And um, I think somebody had gotten confused last time. They said, well, you did three, but you asked for four of these guys. It's because the last one, we're going to talk about it when we go through it. I'm going to walk you through the steps. Um, when you tie it together after you're done doing all this, that makes the fourth strap. Okay, so this is number four. Um, it just gets created at the end there. Uh, the journal, again, should have three notebooks that are five by seven. And those are legit five by seven. So it's uh, seven tall and ten just fold it in half. We'll talk about that in a minute. The journal, again, um, I'm sorry, the folder The folder should be, I said about 5 by 7 because I know, you know, it might be a little bit different, but you still want to kind of max it out. If you make it tiny, it'll be kind of weird. Um, so 5 by 7. Um, and those are the basic things. The journal should have one laminated bookmark with washi samples wrapped around it. Um, I gave an example of how to do that, and I think last time some people thought the washi was supposed to be like a decoration on here, but it's supposed to have lots of it wrapped around and around and around. The reason for that is that the person can then use it. <laughs> so, um, well, actually this is a good example. It has a couple wraps, but I think it was made more for decoration. But the reason this is on here and don't laminate it within it is so that people can take it off and actually use it inside of their, you know. So she has a few wraps, as you can see. And like, let's just say... You know, I want to use this so I can tear it off. Oh, this is some good washi. <laughs> and then, you know, if I had a little picture or something, I can actually use the washi. So that's the point of the washi, guys. So you can actually use it. And we'll talk about that, too. Um, and then some people say they don't really have washi. I don't know if I can say maybe go grab some. But if not, maybe you even it out by adding extra stickers or something else, right? Um, but still make the bookmark, please. Um, just, you know, it should have washi wrapped all around. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the journal will have a laminated dashboard that measures about 5x7. I said about 5x7 because it can stick out if it's, you know, a little bit smaller, that's okay. However you want to do it. This one, she did the loop kind of the way I showed it. This time I'm going to show you how to make a different loop. Make a loop however you like. You do not have to include a pen, but if you want to, that's great. You don't have to actually include the pen, but you do want to do the dashboard. And the point of a dashboard is that, let's say I'm here. And I want to write, and it's kind of squishy. I mean, there's bumpiness here and stuff. So you can put your dashboard under here, and your dashboard helps you keep it nice. And then you can write whatever you're going to write, which I'm not going to do now because I don't know what I'm going to write, and I don't want to ruin my page. So there's that. Okay, so that's the point of a dashboard. And it also can act as a big bookmark, however you want to use it, of course. Um, and we'll talk about all this stuff. The journal should have at least uh, one decorative paper clip and which is literally just a paper clip with whatever you want to put on it. Like this one, she has a little bow. You know, um, however you want to decorate it, she had some extra bookmarks in here. But at least one paper clip. And it should at least come with three different types of embellishments that people can use. So like, you know, rhinestones, ribbon, die cuts, die cut toppers, labels, whatever it is that you want to put in here. Like Gail here had put tons of fun things. So again, just three different types of things. She has die cuts, she has rhinestones, she has stickers, she has little, you know, other little papers, however you want to do that. And so it should have at least one decorative element on the outside. So this time, that decorative element, last time I said it should be like beads, you know, whatever you want to do. You can still put the beads, you can still put a dangle, because that's always really cute. This time we're going to make a little special swag piece that I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun with. So that's what the special piece will be for this time around. And, and then I just put a little note, this doesn't have to, but I just said, you know, I would love for the journals to have an extra pocket, like a library pocket or however, like here she put this library pocket that she die cut, that's super cute. And in the last video I showed you guys how to make one, so I'm not probably going to show that this time because I feel like we're going to, this video is going to be super long and I'm filming in 4K, people, so it's going to take forever uh, to um, get it going. Um, 
yeah, so those are all the things. Again, this is all written down in the guidelines. You can look at it again later. And, oh, one last thing. So I did put on here a new request, and I put it in red. Um, people were really interested in being able to thank their swap partner. I got a lot of messages from people, you know, can you give me their address or their email address? And then I was like, no, because I don't <laughs> feel comfortable with that. I did ask one person, hey, this person wants this. Can I give it to them? And they're like, yeah. And then I went back and forth, and that's not really something I want to spend time doing all the time. <laughs> Because it's just not going to be feasible. Like, what if I don't even see the email for a long time, you know? So, if you would like your swap partner to know your email address or your address address, you know, your name, obviously, um, just include a little card. And maybe I'll do that at the end so I can talk about that. Just something you're going to put on the front. And just know if I open it on camera, your email or your address is going to be showing. So, if you're not comfortable with that, put it in an envelope. Put a little, a little note card, you know, in an envelope. And that way, the person that gets your swap will be able to say, hey, thank you, you know, however you want them to do that, if that's the case. But I got that request a lot from a lot of people, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to request that this time around. So that's all in there. Again, after all the swaps come in, I'll swap them out, we'll choose the names, you know, how we did last time. So, um, let's get started. <laughs> okay, so I was going to start this on my own, but I thought, well, it's always fun to go through papers so you guys can see some of that. Um, so let me grab... Oh, you guys, I have some fun stuff to review for LDRS, and it was right on top. Ooh, that could have been bad. <laughs> well, not bad, but, like, it's not up to me to show things off before companies are ready to show things off, right? Um, okay, let me put that to the side. Okay, so what you're looking at right now are things I printed out for inserts. And this thing right here <laughs> took me forever to create. I did not design this. I did not come up with this. I don't know the person's name. It was very pretty. I printed it out in black and white because the flowers weren't really Christmassy. So, um, and it's a cute week by week planner. So I thought that's a good thing for Christmas time, right? If you have like gifts or things or places you're going, you might want to have that. So I printed out, I think six weeks worth, but I had to plan this out because if you want to look for free printables, what you're going to find is that a lot of people have the kind that you would stick in like a happy planner so it's just one page you're gonna put your holes in it and you're gonna pop it in your happy planner it's a whole other thing when it has to be double-sided back and front and all that kind of stuff so I found this one I shrunk it I printed it It didn't look good it was backwards it was this it was this took me like not just this one because I tried other ones probably a good three hours this morning to get it and look at I finally got it and so I made it I put the words weekly calendar and then I print that out and now it looks like an actual insert that works and it looks nice I will put the link for this actual thing not for what I did I know I have a document for it and I saved it but I don't think it's right because that's this person's work and I think it's a lady I don't want to say well here you know so if you want to mess with it a little bit all I did was resize them so that they are seven inches tall I think I did the full seven inches these little panels you know because they were separate and then four and three quarters wide because I knew I was gonna cut it down a little smaller than five inches wide so it'll fit so you can do that and then just put them both on the page this is Microsoft Word I put this one here I put this one here you know you turn it sideways print it out and do it double-sided and for this one I added this front thing which I, that's just my preference but you guys can kind of work on that I'm sorry I just I don't feel like it's right it would be taking that person's work and just being like oh here I have this you know this one I just thought would be cute for my dashboard it has a 2021 calendar um, this came from lovely planner lovelyplanner.com I will have a link to that too and just because I just made it small it was supposed to be really big again for a happy planner and I just literally just reduced it I didn't really know what size it was I just in the printer I said to print it and I was like just bring it down so it made it this big it's on cardstock and that's what I'm using for that I have blank sheets for my other insert because we're gonna need three inserts right three notebooks so one's gonna be the little weekly planner one's gonna have blank sheets and one is the gridded dot grid again you can get this free printable I will have the link for that too and everyone who uses it is like oh my gosh thank you so much because they had more than just the b6 size printer and the b6 says full page I think that's what they call it because it's gonna be two pages um, I don't know why they call it full page they also have the a6 size and some other size I don't recall so those are gonna be my inserts all I'm gonna do is cut these down and we'll cut these down together I already have this one cut down but I need to do some other clippies um, why do I have this plain paper I don't know so I have not chosen what papers I want to use but I know I recently picked up this Christmas plaid at um, Hobby Lobby it's not the thickest paper but that's okay I'll probably use this for the folder because this other one that has cute stuff is I think yeah not the super thickest paper but it's okay so this is you know for covers and folders and all that this is the North Pole production stack and this is the Christmas plaid then I have this that has all kinds of cute stickers and other cute things that I can put into the 
notebook, which means I need to look at this and make sure that it kind of coordinates, right? Because this is more like old-timey Christmas, you know, with the cars and stuff, where this is kind of more playful and then the plaid stuff. So I'm going to choose my covers and all that. Uh, I'm going to make a paper clip, a couple of paper clips. I have this, I'm telling you, you can stick anything on a paper clip. I have these little hats, and I don't know... <laughs> why I bought them. I never used them. Super cute. And I think I got them a long time ago on one of these like cheap websites. Um, so I have like a hundred of them. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, this is so cute for the little journal. So I'm going to put this on a paper clip. I have some little plushy things, whatever, the little um, pom-poms that I'll show you to put on a paper clip. These paper clips are from Daiso. I have stickers and other fun things that we're going to use. Um, and then we need to make that swag on the front. So that will be the last thing I show you. So really quick, I'm going to get right to it. What I'm going to do is cut down three covers for the inserts. And they're going to be basic, you know, 7 by 10. Um, and then the inserts themselves are going to be cut a little bit smaller and the width. And I'll show you why, because they pop out of the page. They look, you know, they'll stick out. And I need to choose something for my cover. Um, I don't know what I want to use for the cover. So that's that's the big, for me, look, I mean, that's so cute. That's the big one. Oh, maybe something like this, because it's a little more plain. I can play off that. I don't know. So I need to choose a cover, um, and I'll be right back. I think I've chosen all my papers. I'm just going to cut these down to 5 by 7 This is just regular old printer paper. I was going to say time paper again. They can always be 7 tall, because the inserts are going to be legitimately 5 by 7 The outside is going to be a little bit bigger, and then that's it. So... These can always just be seven tall because that doesn't shrink, right? But when you fold them in half, see how these pieces, pieces of paper want to bump out? That's what happens. So you can't really cut it at 10 and think that's going to be fine. I'm going to cut it a little bit smaller than 10, like 9 and 7 eighths. Only because at the end I'm still going to have to cut some. I'm still going to do that weird thing I'll show you right now. This is about, I think, eight pieces of paper. And when I fold it in half, and I'm pushing it all the way up so it stays. Now I can just... It's still going to do that weird thing, and tons of them are still going to be sticking out. And then let's say this is one of my covers. I didn't really plan this, but okay. Um, these are cut at uh, 7 by 10. I'm going to score it at 5. I'm going to score it at 5 on this way. And then we're going to make our cover. And again, these need to be laminated. I think that's the one thing I forgot to say at the beginning. Uh, but it's in the guidelines. Because they keep up longer than that. And a legit laminating, please. Um, I just scored that at 5 inches, didn't I? I hope I did. <laughs> so now when I fold this guy over, of course, this is 10 by 7. So it's going to be legitimately 5 by 7. I'm going to score corner round these. Sorry, corner round. Um, if you don't have a corner rounder and don't want to do that, you know, that's up to you. It looks nicer, but, and also it doesn't poke you at the end, but you can always corner round the plastic anyway. So, again, just like any pop up or anything like that, when you tuck it in here, a bunch of it's going to stick out here. If you don't care about that, leave it. It doesn't look bad. It's fine. Obviously, that's why that happens. But I'm going to pop this out. And uh, what I do is, and you can do this in two sections if you have too many papers, you know. I'm just going to put this in here and really just get that right on there. And I have to give it a good whack. And look, it looks like it's at 4 and 7 eighths, basically. And I just end up hitting it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> until um, until we're good. So I just line it back up again because I know some of the papers don't quite get cut. And I just keep doing that until it cuts nicely. Now this is a little bit messed up. I'm going to do it again. But it's hard for me. Usually what I do is I give it a good whack. And, um, you know, the camera's going to shake and all that. So I'll cut this down a little bit nicer. I'll do that with all of my inserts. This one's already cut down the right way. And then I'm going to cut the dot grid that are double-sided, of course. And I'll be right back. So I think I'm ready. So in this one I have the calendar. That's going to be the first thing in the planner, how I put them in there. I'm just doing it inserts first. Then we'll do... Um, the dashboard and those things and on um, the cover and then we'll laminate them because I am going to laminate the folder this time. I didn't do it last time. So, however, and then this little guy, the dark grid, is going to go in here. And I know some people had issues with staplers that either didn't cut or not didn't cut, didn't go through or, you know, there's broke or <laughs> different issues like that. I'm going to use this little swing, sideways swing stapler from Daiso, which already is set up to not work. I have to keep advancing it, so that's why I bought a new one, because this one's pretty much shot. But all I have to do is go like that, advance it, and close it up. If you want to make three holes in here with an awl, you can poke three holes and put it together with, um, what's it called? With, like, a uh, string. I punch from the inside. I did it last time the other way, the typical way, where you put the, the 
staple out here and then the rough part of the staple in here but I feel like with the elastic and you're gonna move it around and I mentioned this before when I made my first TN uh, for you guys um, I'd rather do it this way because it doesn't mess with the elastic so I'm gonna put one staple there then I gotta open it and <laughs> advance it because that's this thing's acting funny on me and just close it up as long as it's gonna push one down yep we got it and then another one on the other side if you put the three holes all you have to do is kind of weave in and out with a needle and thread and you can bound your journal that way or you don't even have to bind it at all some people like to leave the loose papers it I think it's nicer to actually stick it together or at least stick the papers together if you don't want to stick the cover to it but um, you know you do whatever you like so I'm gonna finish these two up and I'll be right back they're all done what I'm gonna do is corner around them all and you can corner around them at the same time or separately you know what I'm saying? Like the inside pages, then the outside. But I'm going through everything. So, I might have to do it again. Eh, no, that's not bad. Let's try to keep it kind of closed because that's basically how they're going to be, right? Get them all and then corner around. That one I kind of missed. Okay, I'm going to go around all of them and do that. Um, I am going to use my crocodile to make holes. Um, into the journal. If you don't have that, you want to use an awl. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, when I come back, I cut down my dashboard. I made this one a little bit different because of the pattern paper. I, I wanted it to look a little more even. So this one's a little bit smaller than I did last time because I'm also using a different type of thing to hold my pen. So this is four and five eighths for some reason <laughs> by six and seven eighths. Did I say that right? Yeah, four and five eighths by six and seven eighths. And I'm going to cut down my little calendar to be on the opposite side of this dashboard at the same uh, size, okay? And I'll be back. So I have all my inserts ready. I think I was going to do something like this when I pop them in. But that's that. I probably should do the, fold the folder next, but for some reason I went onto the dashboard. So dashboard it is. I'm going to glue these together. I'm going to stick them together with uh, my ATG. I would recommend uh, wet glue if you can spend the time to wait for it to dry. Um... Because I don't really like double siding things, especially like on the cover, which I'm going to do this time. But um, because then it has air trapped in there and that air can start working its way out. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> and um, and kind of make a mess of your journal. These aren't meant to last forever. They're meant to protect the thing while you're, you know, doing whatever it is that you're doing. So it's it'd be nice that they lasted forever. But you know what? It's handmade, homemade. Like this is even off a little bit. I'll probably just trim that off. They're both white, but it's very not noticeable, but I am going to trim that off because I can see it. So let me just trim that little bit to make it a little more straight. And on the other side too, just in case. So again, this is actually smaller than 4 and 5 eighths like I had mentioned at first. I'll probably put a little sticker up here. And this looks good. And corner round because I'm corner rounding everything. So I'm going to corner round that and have this ready to go. Now last time I added a little strip here that was going to make the um, pen loop. You can do that. This time I'm not doing that. I do also have this for my bookmark and I cut it at two inches just because it looked nice here on two inches. So I made that up. That bookmark is whatever you want to do clearly. It's two by six and three quarters. And then I have a little stripe piece on the back side just to make it look cute. I'll probably pop the hole on this side but either way I'm going to stick this together too. I think I've heard people say that sometimes if you use a wet glue on the stuff that you're going to be um, laminating, it reheats, it heats up again. I don't know. I haven't tried that, but I would say if you're afraid of that, do like a bookmark or something small first, and then see what happens. Again, a little bit off right here. I'm just going to trim that down. Littlest amount. Okay, and I'm going to corner around this too. You don't have to, and you can actually make this a fun shape if you wanted to. Like, I corner around that, but maybe this can be cut like this, more of a bookmark shape. Um, I'm going to, nah, I'll still corner around it. <laughs> I'll still corner around it. The other thing I was going to pop on here, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm just doing the basic things. Again, some of this stuff is written out, and you'll be able to read that. Watch the other video. It's more in-depth, because right now I'm just, like, sailing through. This is going to be our cover. Um, this is kind of thick, but, again, it's white on the other side, and I really wanted this one to be really special. I think last time I left it white on the inside, and that's fine. But this time I got this other paper from that layering weight set from the, um, like, 
paper kit, the one that comes with chipboard and stuff like that. And I'm going to stick these together. Again, I'm going to use this thing, but however you want this to happen would be good. I'm trying to get it right on the edge, but I'm not doing a very good job of that. <laughs> I'm going to try to really get some in that middle section where we're going to be popping holes and all that because I don't really want this to delaminate. Of course, none of us do. Ooh, I think that's why I stopped using my ATG. I was wondering, I'm like, why did I stop using it? Okay, my paper definitely has a direction, see? <laughs> so that should be facing up, and this should also be facing up. And hopefully I can stick this down. Oh, goodness. This is scary. Okay, that one's there. This is here. That should be good. Oh, I forgot. I made the inside paper a little bit smaller than the 7 by... Oh, let's talk about that again. This is the cover. <laughs> 7 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. I'm not going to score it quite yet until I'm ready. But, um... 7 and a quarter tall, 11 and a quarter, because we are going to make like an inch spine. And then I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, so when it goes around your notebooks, it doesn't look silly. Okay, I'm going to really smash this down and burnish it really well. And I'll be back and we'll talk about that when we get to that point. This is so funny. Christmas in July and I'm burning up right now. Oh my gosh, under these lights, especially it's hot. Okay, I'll be right back. So for the folder, so we've got pretty much all the other pieces done and I still got to do the swag and maybe that's going to be a second video. I don't know. Um, well, that's not going to be possible actually. Okay, well anyway, um, this piece of paper is going to make the folder. Now I just made up these numbers. It's going to be different from last time. But if you like last times better than do last times. I'm just making it a little bit smaller than 5 by 7 because um, I'm going to laminate it this time. I didn't laminate my folder last time. So I just want to make sure here. We're at 10 and 3 quarters. Okay. Ten, so we're 10 and 3 quarters by 9 and 3 quarters. On the 9 and 3 quarter inch side, I'm going to score it at... You can score it at three inches, basically. Oh gosh, you guys, I was um, starting to score it on the wrong side. <laughs> so, on the side that is nine and three quarters, let me just make sure because I'm going to mess that up. I'm going to score it at three inches. And I'm doing that because nine and three quarters, we're basically taking three inches off to make the pocket. Um, so, again, my folder is a little smaller than seven and a little bit smaller than five in the other direction. So, in this direction, we're folding it up. It's going to be six and three quarter inches, right, with the three inch pocket. On the other direction of the 10 and 3 quarters, we're going to go half an inch on either side. And to be honest, I haven't even done the math. I just added it up, but I don't really know where my midsection is on this, so let me think. Um, we have 10 and 3 quarters, is that what I said? Yep, 10 and 3 quarters. We take an inch off. That's 9 and 3 quarters. So let me do the math and I'll be right back. I don't know what kind of math I was doing. You know why it's hot? I hear my kids talking and I just, I, I want to get this done because I want to get uploaded for you guys. So we did half an inch on the other side. We're basically going to score at five and three eighths because ten and three quarters divided by two is five and three eighths. <laughs> so I don't know why I was trying to make it more complicated. Now I am going to, like I said, um, uh, laminate this but I'm gonna cut it however I want to do it you can do whatever you want to do to make your folder so don't worry about it I just like to take this bottom corner off if you like to keep this on and take this off, however you want to do it so I'm just gonna go down this strip here just as straight as I can and just angle it just cutting that score right where that score line was and I might have to perfect that a little bit because that was a little bit wonky same thing on this side this one's a little bit harder for me because I have to cut on this opposite side instead of in where I like. I guess I can cut it from this direction. And like I said, I was already scoring this on the wrong edge. <laughs> okay, so this is going to fold in. This is going to fold in. Now, there's lots of ways that you can do your... Um, okay, I hope you don't hear the kids. I know I hear them and a lot of times you guys are like, oh, I didn't hear anybody. Uh, I'm going to fold around that half line. And give it a press this way because as you can see it's already a little bit goofy, a little bit off. So I'm just making sure we're at the halfway. Again, it's you know your scoring board, it might do this, it might do that, it acts funky. I'm gonna close that. There we go. And now we have this guy. Now you can put it together like this and cut like a circular shape. You would go from the middle though, okay? <laughs> so go from this middle out like this to make like a circular pocket. Do you want it to just be squared off? Do you want it to be like 
exactly from this middle out here. Whatever shape you want to do with your um, pocket, go for it. So I think what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to start at the center. Usually I start on the outer side. And just angle this way. If you want it rounded, do it round. Open it up. And fold your little pockets. Now, the reason this scares me and when you go to laminate and all that is because we're going to cut into this. And, I mean, it can open up right here, you know. But, do what you got to do. All right. Um, let me score that real quick. We're going to score it better once we get everything glued down. And I'm just going to cut this. I like to cut this. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just like that. And then I cut a little divot. So this is, and you can do it after you stick it down. But for me, I just like to do it now. Just a little divot to make it look like a peachy folder. And this time we're going to put glue on this, on the inside tab. And then on this other one, oopsie. This is all going to get laminated anyway, so. But, and on this one, I am going to glue it down. If you don't want to, don't. I'm going to put a little glue on the outside of the tab. Okay. And that just helps us stick that down. And then stick this one down. And really bone fold this. You want this to be like if it was one. Because <laughs> you don't want it to get messed up when you go to laminate and all that. So that is our little folder. Done a little bit differently from the last time. Again, I made it a little bit smaller. But if you're just not going to laminate it, you might as well make it a 5x7 completely. Which means I would make it um, like 10 inches by 11 so you still score a half inch on the other side, and that'll give you 10 inches that you're going to fold right in half at 5 inches. And then up here, by 10, you're going to score it at 3 inches or at 7 inches, however you want to see it. And then you fold that up, and then you still have a 5 by 7 completely. This one's, again, a little bit smaller. Just a little bit, like a quarter inch all around smaller. Um, so when we laminate it, that lamination is going to add some to it. Do you want to corner around this too? Of course I do. <laughs> so I'm going to corner around it. You don't have to. I'm um, going to corner around it here and here. Now, other folks will also corner around that middle section. That's another reason why I made it a little bit shorter. Because when your elastic comes in here, it's not going to gouge it. And to me, you know, if you weren't going to laminate this at all, maybe that's something you want to think about. Um, corner rounding there. Um, just so that the elastic will fit in a little bit nicer. But since I'm going to use my lamination, I, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to leave this intact. But you can corner around that edge too. Okay. Where are we at? I need to do a little more decoration on the dashboard and then we'll start laminating. So I just took a peek and this video is long enough as it is. So I'm going to stop here after I decorate a little bit on the dashboard and we're going to score this. And then the next part of the video, we're going to laminate all these pieces, um, including my little folder. And, um, and then we're going to make our little swag. And I'm sorry, I don't have a picture and the intro for it for you guys because I haven't made it yet and it'll be the first time I make one for something like this but it's just basically felt flowers that are going to be on a little base of felt that we're going to velcro to the front um, strap basically it's really easy again if you want to make it out of paper however you want so I was kind of looking at this and again this is kind of plain on that side actually I can decorate both sides if I want but I'm just going to finish up my dashboard by adding some of the stickers that are in that kit and I think this one will fit on there pretty well I think that's cute. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Again, this is the dashboard, so you can do whatever you like with it. I kind of wanted to um, put a little something on here that's going to stick out. And on the back side, it's just going to be plain. So let me see. What does it say on the other side? Oh, Joy to the World. Um, hmm. I put this on here. That's cute. But then on the back side, I might have to reposition this. Good thing that these are kind of like thick stickers. I'll be able to pick that up and reposition if I want to. <laughs> I'm still deciding where I, where I want to put this. I'll put it here, I guess. A little bit higher up. And did I put that down crooked? You know what? I'd rather not pick at it. I think I could, but... 
things like this happen and then I pick at it and then I regret having <laughs> done that so I'm gonna leave it alone and maybe some of these little guys just on the other side of the sticker. The sticker is pretty thin so I want to put something on this side just to help make that sticker a little th sturdier so when I um, laminate this, this whole thing will be laminated with a little sticker top and it'll just kind of peek out of the top of the book, which I think is cute. Um, I don't think I'm going to add anything to this because it's already kind of what it is. I don't know. Yeah, I think I'm okay with this one being just the way it is. And we need to score this. So this will be the end of this video. Sign up if you're interested already. I know, don't... Hopefully I'll have the swag video up later today, but it's already getting late. I tell you by the time I've done what I need to do with this video. Um, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to take a while to render and to go up. And I think I'm not going to render it in 4K because that's just going to take forever. So it'll probably just be standard definition, something nice. <laughs> okay. So again, our paper is seven and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. So I'm going to score it at five and an eighth. Basically we need to score at five and an eighth on either side. Uh, so I'm going to do five and an eighth and I'm only going to do that score line. You know why? Because I have those two pieces of paper that I stuck together. And I just feel like if I give it that half inch from here, it's going to maybe come apart. So I'm going to do my five and an eighth. I'm going to turn it and do five and an eighth again. Now let's say you have some really nice double-sided paper. You know, I was really thinking about like, oh, I have Crafters Companion paper I really like. Um, however you want. We're going to do five and an eighth and then you would do five and five eighths. Okay, you would score it at five and five eighths if you want the three lines like I showed you in the last video or like, let's see, Gail's here. Like this. If you want that, that middle line, just score at five and an eighth, five and five eighths, and then six and an eighth, which is again, five and one eighth on either side, and then five and five eighths down the center. I am afraid to do that, so I'm going to keep scoring. I'm going to turn around and score on this side. Again, just because I stuck those two papers together, I want to be a little more careful that it doesn't delaminate, because whatever. So my spine is going to be more of a straight spine. And again, I'm going to fold it now. I like to do this. If you don't want to do that, then don't do it. Bone fold it or fold it later. But for now, I am going to use the bone folder even because I want it to push out. That's kind of why I cut this inside paper, like I said, the smallest bit small on this side. Because when you stick two papers together, they can't occupy the same space at the same time. So one is going to have to give. Or it's just going to be really tight and weird. So that's the other option. Um... Even right now, it's acting kind of funny for me, but let's do that. Okay. So I'm just going to give it a really good crease and, like, really... Hold, I don't know if you can see that, how it's kind of bending up. It's because those two pieces are together, and it's like, mm. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to really come in here and try to get that paper difference to squeeze out. <laughs> Again, I probably shouldn't have squished it down until until I was doing this part of the whole thing, you know. There we go. And we don't make the holes, at least I don't, until after I laminate it. So, in the next video, I have a straight spine. If you want that middle, again, it's just a half inch on either side. You'll have a, a third score line. I'm not going to put it, because I'm afraid. <laughs> so, I have this, this. I have our stuff to laminate, and then we'll do our swag in the second video. But if you want to sign up already, again, my email will be in the description box. I think I failed to mention that at the beginning. Uh, you have until July 12th to sign up and keep an eye out for part number two. But my email will be there, and you guys can email and say you would like to sign up. And I'll write your name down, and I'll get you the guidelines sent back to you. And keep an eye out for the second part, because that's when we're going to put this all together. Again, corner around these guys. I'm sorry I tried to go a little faster just because I thought, oh, I don't have to explain how to make one all over again, but guess what? I think I did. <laughs> all right. Uh, again, I'll have the links to the older video if you need to really follow very, very closely if you're not sure if I skipped over something this time. Okay, I'll be back.